Somebody open your mouth and give him a shout of praise. Psalm 149 and 6 says, Let the high praise of God be in their mouth. The high praise of God in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. This honor hath all the saints. Praise ye the Lord. The word of the Lord tells us that one can put a thousand to flight and two can put 10,000 to flight. I wonder what could happen in the next few moments tonight if every voice in this building recognized that you were made for war. You were made for war. Somebody turn around and tell your neighbor it's time for war on the floor. Tell your neighbor it's time for war on the floor. Now I'm going to need some sanctified voices and anointed hands to open up your mouth and set the battle in array. Welcome to Friday night of PQ Conference. Come on, it's been sung about all week. It's been preached about by the preachers. Why don't we do it? Come on, give God the glory. Give Him all the honor. Give Him all the praise. Come on, lift up your voice and shout.
humbly broken in your presence. No one compares to you. No one compares to you. You are the King Jesus. Come on, can we love him in this house?
praise all over the house. Come on, is there really no one like Jesus? Would you lift your hands and lift your voice and worship him? There's no one like Jesus. You could make your way back to your seats. What a tremendous presence of the Lord is in this house tonight. How many of you have been enjoying peak 2022? How many of you have been enjoying Houston? Few of us. It is an honor to be here with you tonight. We're so thankful to all of you that have come to peak 2022, that have paid your registration, that have given in the offering, and we are thankful for what you are doing. Remember, if you have not registered, if you're in here, please help us out and register outside in the foyer as soon as service is over. There is peak merchandise that goes to support the Bible quizzers. If you could help us out, make sure you pick up your peak merchandise and remember this week. Can you say amen? One more thing to mention tonight in the hotel. If you could please remember, we want to come back next year and we want to give a good witness. So if you are under the age of 18, after 2 a.m., you will be required to be accompanied by an adult. And if any security or anyone um, tries to talk with you or tells you anything, please be a Christian and a good young apostolic. Can you say amen? It is an honor to have with us tonight the Executive Council of the Worldwide Pentecostal Fellowship. Many of them joined us on the platform. We are honored that these men are here with us. We are thankful that they entrusted uh, the risk and the heartache of this meeting to get it all together, and they supported us. But we are most especially glad tonight to have Bishop Kenny Godair, the executive chairman of the Worldwide Pentecostal Fellowship. Brother Godair, come and greet us. We're so glad that you're at peak with us tonight. Thank you, Brother Wells. Let's give God praise, everybody in the house. Can we do that? From front to back, side to side, let's lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Praise God. What a great peak conference 2022 that this has been from the very first moment of the service Wednesday night to this present moment. And I know tonight's going to be just a glorious night on this finale of this great peak conference. Anybody glad for what you've heard? Praise God. Aren't you glad for what you've received? I want to say thanks to Brother Wells and the Youth Council for the great job that they have done in this peak conference. It's just been exciting all the way through. The great preaching that we've heard in every session has been a clear, certain sound, anointed sound. Aren't you glad for the preached Word of God? Anybody excited about the Word of God? Hallelujah. It's already been said at the start of this service tonight when the scripture talks about one can put a thousand to flight, two can put 10,000. I wonder what would happen with over 6,000 that's in this auditorium tonight if we will go back home anointed, Holy Ghost filled, Word of God filled. What we're going to do to our local churches, what we're going to do to our communities. Come on, come on. It's revival time. It's time for an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. It's time for peak to double and triple until Jesus comes. It's time to have a move of the Holy Ghost. Let's give God praise, everybody. Thank you, Brother Godair. How many of you love Brother Godair? How many of you love what the Worldwide Pentecostal Fellowship is doing? Amen. I want to give honor here tonight to many of the people hundreds of people that have made this week a success. Uh, First and foremost, if the Youth Council would stand, the Youth Development Council, if you'd please stand. These men are powerful apostolic leaders. And they are visionary leaders that are not afraid to take risk. And they are powerful men 
And I want to say thank you to them. It's been a privilege to help and be a part of what God is doing in the youth of the Worldwide Pentecostal Fellowship, and I'm thankful for them. Also give thanks to Brother David Howell and this music team, Brother Kirk Kenhai, music director. Haven't the music been incredible this week? I want to thank Brother Austin Keith, who is helping with the media team and all the creative minds from across the country that have come together to collaborate to help the live stream and the video projection. How many of you have been blessed by that this week? Amen. I want to say thank you to Brother Ben Davis who helped us plan and negotiate all the contracts surrounding this. We love Brother Davis. And we have a special guest and his wife here with us tonight. Last year in Tulsa, Brother Joel Booker, who was the previous chairman, youth chairman of the Youth Development Council. I guess he retired. But there's something they say, old youth presidents never die, they just move to a different position. Amen. So we're believing that. But it is an honor to have Pastor Joel Booker and his wife here with us tonight. Amen. They were the chairman for almost six years, I believe. And they did a tremendous job leading Peak, and they left Peak in a financial and powerful position to be able to make this move and I want him to come. We have a gift for them. If his wife is here, she's supposed to be up here with us. How many of you love Pastor and Sister Booker? Why don't we stand and let's give them honor for their years of service to the youth of the Worldwide Pentecostal Fellowship. Come on, let's give it to them big. We love them. Well, how many love Jesus tonight? Anybody know God's been good to us? If you don't know that God's been good to you, you need to look around and see what God is doing here in Houston this week. I'm here to tell you God's up to something. Amen, amen. You can be seated. And I do want to say very quickly how much we love and appreciate the, uh, this peak conference, all of the young people that are here, all of the churches that are represented. And again, how many rep appreciate the Youth Council of the WPF? We salute their vision and courage for bringing Peak to Houston. And I'm excited about what the Lord is doing. Isaiah said it like this, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Now, I'm here to tell you God's on the move. God's getting better all the time. God's doing better things. This house is full tonight. We had church Wednesday night. We had church Thursday morning last night and this morning and I believe that tonight we're gonna to see the best yet anybody ready for some church tonight hallelujah once you clap your hands and thank God for his goodness hey man thank you brother Booker how many of you ready to have some church tonight that's all right if we were at the rap concert across the way how many of you ready to have some church tonight We've enjoyed the preaching of the Word of God. It's been tremendous. Our speakers have taken us into the heavenlies. They've taken us to the place where the Holy Ghost can change us forever. This incredible music team, all the singers, all this beautiful choir. Have this choir been awesome this week? I feel like we're primed for an explosion on a Friday night at peak. How about you? Here's what let's do. We've got all the thank yous out of the way. There's a man of God who's prepared. His heart is ready. If I know him, he's been praying and fasting for what the Holy Ghost is going to say. We got one more choir song here in just a minute, and then we're going to take an offering. But I wonder if we could just make this place ring for about the next five minutes, and let's just see how loud it can get in here with apostolic praise. Would you lift your voice as the choir prepares? Come on, all across the house. Lift your voice, don't just clap your hands. Let's lift your voice and let's give God praise.
Let's worship him all across this auditorium. Come on, if you know we serve a great God, just lift your hands and begin to worship him. Come on, worship him.
we still work, we still worship and serve a miracle working God. I truly believe that tonight can be a special night for somebody. God wants to prove right now in this service that he's still moving and he's still proving just how great he is. I wish a handful of people would believe that tonight. So here's what we're going to do. I want you to lift up your knee to him right now and we're going to worship him in faith and we're going to believe that he's going to work a miracle in your life. Come on, we've heard the preached word of God. We've had good music. Now I believe it's time for us to elevate our faith. Come on, let, lift up your knee to him right here in this moment. than to give our great God great praise. Come on, Pete, 2022. Lift your voice, lift your hands. Give him great praise. Come on, let it thunder in this room right now. We praise you, Jesus. We magnify you. We lift your name. And give God 
a hand clap of praise. And while you start clapping your hands, I want you to open your mouth and put your hands and your mouth together and give him praise. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can return to your seats. We're going to follow the rules that Pastor Miles Young put in place last night. It has fallen my lot tonight to receive this evening's offering, and I will confess to you that I am not a professional offering taker. And so, uh, before we began this service, I went ahead and started asking the ministry, my friends, if they would help with this offering tonight. We can look at the evidence that to grow and to move forward, it takes great vision, and great vision only happens when we take risk. And these men on the Youth Development Council have taken a great risk and have moved peak to Houston, Texas. And I think this evening is a great opportunity for them to see that the move was a good move and we salute you brethren for doing this. I don't know about you, but I wanna be a part of something that's growing and advancing. I wanna be a part of something that's going forward. I'm not interested in the church of yesterday I want to be a part of the church that's marching into the future. And so tonight we're going to give and we're going to start this offering out. We've already received $60,000 and we want to receive $100,000 in this place tonight. So we have 40000 more to go and I believe we can do that very quickly here tonight. I want to give you some reasons why I am giving. Number one, my kids are here, Benson, Beatrice, and Camilla, and I want them in this apostolic environment. And that's the reason we're all here tonight, because we need a touch from heaven, and we need to leave this place better than when we came. The second reason I'm giving tonight is my youth group is here. And the first night at the conclusion of Brother Andrew Howard's message, two of the young men in our youth group, I don't want to embarrass them, but Anthony and Braxton, they lifted their hands and the Holy Ghost came upon them, renewing them in the baptism of the Holy Ghost like I haven't seen. That's enough reason to give. The third reason I give is it is a universal biblical principle that whatever you sow, you will reap. So I need reaping here tonight, and so I'm gonna sow my giving here. The fourth reason and final reason for giving tonight is for the perpetuation of this apostolic youth conference. I want it to continue to go forward. I wanna come next year, Lord willing, and be here. So tonight is your night. This is the last night. It's the last opportunity for you to give. And I'm asking you tonight to prayerfully consider giving in this offering. You can also text to give. It's on the screens. And that number is there. You can text to give or you can give. The ushers are here and they're ready to give. I want us to stand to our feet. It's a lot easier to get to your wallet. And we're going to give tonight for the advancement of peak. We want to see it continue to grow and to become even greater and be more influential among the apostolic movement. Thank God for what we've heard this week. Thank God for the preached word of God, for all the singing, all the worship. But what do you say? Let's give for next year tonight. Lift your hands and let's pray over this offering right now in the name of Jesus. God, I ask you right now to touch each and every person in this room. I pray you would put a spirit of generosity upon them that they would give tonight and that we would accomplish our goal. In the precious, lovely name of Jesus, we pray. Let's give tonight.
If you know that Jesus is in the room, I wonder if you'd give God a, a shout tonight. Come on, let's give God a shout tonight. Come on, Pete, we can do better than that. Has he ever done anything for you? Has he ever brought you out of anything? Has he ever made a way? You ought to shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Everybody in this place from the front to the back.
Do it, do it.
the front to the back, from side to side. I want you to shake heaven's gates. I want you to rattle the gates of hell. Give God praise right now. Well, well, well. Let's give God praise. Let's give God praise. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Woo, it feels good in the presence of the Lord tonight. Amen. It feels good in a Holy Ghost atmosphere. There's enough Holy Ghost in this place tonight to heal somebody. That drug habit that you haven't been able to shake, God can break it right now by the power of Jesus' name. That porn addiction, God can break it right now in Jesus' name. Hey! Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Praise God. Praise God. You can find your seats in close. My, my, my. What a mighty outpouring of the Holy Ghost. God is in the miracle working business. Amen. And we are so thankful. We are so excited about what has happened here at this peak conference. We know that people are being strengthened. They are being edified. We have come together from all over the United States and from around the world, and we have joined together in one accord in one place. This is Joel's prophecy coming to pass, that in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. You cannot find a place in this world where people from every nationality and every language come together to get along. But here, not only do we get along, but we rejoice and we take territory for the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen, amen. We want to thank all of you for your participation this week. There's been many people that have been thanked. One person in particular I want to thank is Brother Jeff Hoffer from Holy Ghost Radio. If you love Holy Ghost Radio, why don't you give Brother Hoffer some love out there? There are thousands that are joining online with us right now. 
we are reaching tens of thousands of people with this peak conference and we're so happy about that I also want to take a moment just one second and I want to give special consideration and thanks to our current youth chairman brother Zach Wells he's thanked everybody he's thanked the executive committee and the musicians but if you knew the pressure that was on. Now the youth council, we made the decision and the executive council okayed it, but it was Brother Zach Wells that had the weight of this whole thing on his shoulders. And as a leader, he helped hold the course. I'm thankful for your leadership, Brother Wells. God bless you. We love you. We appreciate you. And we're excited about the future of the youth department of the Worldwide Pentecostal Fellowship. Amen. The man that I'm bringing to this pulpit tonight is no stranger to he has blessed us, he has helped us, he has worked on the youth committee, he's been a voice of stability, strength, and vision. He is a great pastor, he pastors a great church in Generette, Louisiana. He preaches all over the country and around the world at conferences, and he's been a voice, and he is a voice to this generation. This last year, I have watched Brother Wesley Jackson face great personal difficulty and struggle. He has had tragedy in his family. He has had unexpected circumstances that have beset him. He has faced great difficulty and through it all, he has kept his head high and his faith strong. He is a consummate Christian and man of God. And we believe tonight that Brother Wesley Jackson has a word of God for us here at Peak Conference. Amen. So I want you to stand to your feet tonight. I want you to put your hands together and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Brother Jackson, come tonight. Preach to us. We love you. We appreciate you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Isn't it good to be in God's house with God's people? Isn't it good to be in God's house with God's people? Isn't it good to be in God's house with God's people? I am indeed very honored, humbled that I would be trusted with this great honor of ministering to you on this last night of peak 2022. And haven't we had a wonderful time and sat in heavenly places this week. To my friends and fellow laborers who I'm so privileged to serve on this council with, I appreciate each and every one of you very, very much. And as Brother Urshan has already said, thank you, Brother Wells, for such a tremendous job in carrying this load with class and wisdom we salute you tonight. We love you very, very much. I give honor to my man of God tonight, my bishop, whom I owe everything to. And to have him here on this platform tonight is such a special honor. I love you, Brother Holmes. Thank you for investing in me and so many others. I'm here tonight because of a man of God. To my family tonight, I have uh, three of my children here, um, Bella, Grant, and Annabelle. And then I have one that is really close to being here. And so at this point, we need, we need him to hold off just a little bit so I don't get in big trouble. I need to get through and get home. Uh, at 42 years of age, uh, we thought it'd be a good idea to have a, another child. And so y'all please pray for me. <laughs> and uh, then, uh, of course, Brother Urshan made mention of it, but uh, tragedy struck our family back in March, and the Lord gave my wife and I, through that, 
the great privilege and honor to get to be a big part in the life and raising my nieces and nephews and uh, Chrislyn, Cameron, and Colin are here tonight. And Caitlin is at home listening with my wife, but I love them very, very, very much. And I'm so happy to have them in our home and in this meeting tonight. I have my sister here, whom I love dearly. Of course, uh, my sweet wife, whom I love so very much, I hate that she is unable to be here, but she texted me uh, as I was walking up onto the platform that she is praying for me and praying for us, and so I'm very thankful to the executive council. We honor you tonight, to every man of God that is here. What about hearing it for your pastor, Peak? Your man of God. And let me tell you, each and every one of you, you really do need preacher religion. You need to think that your pastor is the greatest preacher on planet Earth. Because at the end of the day, he's the one investing in you, feeding you, guiding you, protecting you. Are you thankful for your man of God tonight? Man, amen, amen. I feel that it is my assignment tonight after much prayer that on this last night of Peak Conference 2022 that you need to be challenged, provoked, and charged to go back to your world and as remnants of his heritage, facilitate a great revival of healing and restoration that our world so desperately needs, that your community so desperately needs that your family so desperately needs. I believe tonight that there will be high and holy callings. I believe that the word will be confirmed right here in our midst with many miracles, signs, and wonders. I believe without doubt that God will emphatically put his stamp of approval on what we're doing here this evening. I was praying some time back and I felt God speak to me that in challenging you and charging you and in provoking you to facilitate the revival of restoration that all of us as the church of the living God has been called and anointed to do that we must remember that there is only one recipe for that kind of revival and that kind of restoration. So I come to you tonight not with enticing words of man's wisdom. Matter of fact, especially after the tremendous preaching that we have heard from every man of God that has graced this pulpit this week. I'm, I'm somewhat embarrassed of how simple of a message that it is that I bring. But tonight, not in trying to impress you, not in trying to entertain you, not in trying to simply motivate you, but in endeavoring to challenge you to be the agent of restoration and revival that God wants to use you to be. I'm simply just going to be me and preach what God has put on my heart. Will you help me for just a few moments here on this last night of peace?
Let me tell you, there are competing anointings taking place right here, right here. Next door, there are people gathered and they are in just as an anointed environment as we are in tonight. Their anointing comes from the spirit of the Antichrist and they are being used as instruments and tools to facilitate death and destruction. And yet here, there is an anointing. That though the enemy has come to steal, kill, and destroy, there's a generation rising up that can be a part of people having life and life more abundantly. The only reason that these two anointings are competing is not because of which one has the power to prevail. Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. But the now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can think or ask is directly connected to us stirring up the power that is within us. And so right now, if you're going to let the Lord arise and our enemies be scattered, uh, I want you to just lift your hands towards this front. Uh, I'm going to lift my hands towards you uh, and we're going to pray that God would anoint us together for such a time as this. Uh, God, I am so unqualified to be where I'm at tonight. Uh, I haven't done anything to earn it. Uh, I certainly do not deserve it, uh, but I'm here as a servant and a messenger. Uh, with a word from you. Uh, my prayer is that you would hide me behind the cross, uh, that you would let your people see you, uh, and that tonight, uh, more than just experiencing the miraculous that we're getting ready to experience, uh, that each and every individual here uh, would go back to their world, uh, and they would begin to facilitate great revival and restoration. Uh, we pray it in the name that is above every name, uh, the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, and we clap our hands uh, and lift our voices uh, in praise to you right now. Come on, Pete, can you give him praise and thanksgiving one more time? Thank you for standing. And may God richly bless you as you're seated in the great presence of our wonderful Savior. To say tonight that our world is broken seemingly beyond remedy and that is, is in very deep, dark despair is certainly an understatement of epic proportion. Wickedness is reigning because of reckless abandonment in our world, your world, my world, and with evil seemingly triumphing at every turn. Our world has become so acceptant to living in complete and total chaos, confusion, the very minds and souls of mankind being torn apart, lived in total and complete destruction as we see our world reaping a whirlwind because they recklessly sowed up to the wind. Destruction and chaos is seemingly so severe that the once unthinkable, unimaginable is now so common that the confusion is being billed as common sense and the fear of being canceled weighs heavily on the minds of any individual who dares to speak up and challenge this chaos. With the LGBTQ movement 
greatly anointed and in full force uh, with transgenderism uh, being taught to our kindergartners uh, in school uh, with violence erupting uh, not just in big cities uh, or inner cities but violence erupting uh, in your communities some of you uh, where it's unfathomable and just a few years ago would be unthinkable with drug addiction at an all-time high both those dealing with addiction uh, through prescriptions that are prescribed uh, or by illegal gain uh, our world uh, is spiraling uh, out of control uh, hate and division uh, is being sold uh, with reckless abandonment let me tell you what the enemy wants to do uh, he wants to cause every one of us uh, to hate somebody uh, and be divided with somebody uh, simply uh, because of the color of their skin uh, the culture that they're a part of uh, or the language that they speak uh, but that is the anointing of the Antichrist. Uh, that does not come uh, from the people of God who have been anointed uh, by Jesus Christ. Now, I'd like to just take a minute and I'd like to just commend Peak Conference uh, that we've got many nationalities. Uh, we've got people who speak many languages. Uh, they come from many different cultures. Uh, and yet in Houston, Texas, uh, we're not worried about color. Uh, we're not worried about culture. Uh, but we're worried uh, about the cross uh, of Jesus Christ uh, and the language uh, of the Spirit. Perversion, perversion is no longer looked down on, but it's celebrated. Suicide is, it, 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 it's out of control. And, and I just, you, you, you just give me a few minutes, but, but I do want to stop. And I want to tell you that suicide is never the answer. And I also want to tell you if you're battling the spirit of suicide, don't die in your dilemma isolated, uh, thinking somebody will look down on you. Uh, should you share the curse uh, that you're dealing with? Uh, you need to find your man of God. Uh, you need to link up with one of them sweet elders of God in your assembly. Uh, you need to get to an altar uh, and you need to let God help you uh, because there is a helping hand. I preach like this tonight because there was a time, Brother Buxton, that the church seemed insulated from these things. There was a time that the people of God could draw a few lines and preach against a few things and keep these things that are destroying our world out of the church. But, but with a fervor, the enemy is working so hard not just in and on our world, but in and on our churches. I hate it. It pains me. We've dealt with it in our own assembly, Brother Godair. But suicide is not something any longer that you just read about in a newspaper happening in some city, in some far off places. Uh, but unfortunately, there's many men of God in this house tonight that's had to preach the funerals uh, of saints uh, that became so tormented uh, by the pressure and spirit of fear uh, that they felt like their only escape uh, was to end it all. Uh, I hate that it's a world problem, uh, but I think it would be just a little better if it was only a world problem. Uh, but tonight, uh, tonight, uh, tonight, uh, there are people 
people in this building uh, that's been dealing with it. Uh, I've come to tell you, baby, uh, you're in the right place uh, at the right time. Uh, you're with the people. Uh, we're not going to kick you while you're down, uh, but we're going to pick you up uh, and pray you through uh, and let you go home uh, and tell what God has done. There's a real epidemic in our churches. It's not something you can treat with a vaccine. It's not something you can get a little booster shot and take off your mask and everything be okay. Because as deadly as COVID seemed to be in our world, the real epidemic is drug addiction. Now, I'm not talking about in the world. I'm talking about in the church. There is not a family in this convention center tonight that is not dealing with somebody in your family or very closely connected to your family uh, that the enemy has such a grip on them uh, with mind altering uh, and mood altering drugs uh, that you can't even hardly go to sleep at night uh, and it scares you to death when your phone rings uh, because you wonder uh, when they will be next. Uh, we can bury our head in the sand if we want to. The problem is in burying our heads, I buried my brother. I didn't come to depress you tonight. I didn't come to preach about Satan and his powers and only what he can do. But I have stepped to this sacred desk with an undeniable holy anointing. Though you can't see them, there are multitudes of angels and ministering spirits in this building. And if you don't believe in that, you're in the wrong place uh, because the angels of the Lord still encamp among them that love him. There is an anointing in this house tonight. There is a power in this house tonight. There is great victory in this house tonight. Uh, and what I've come to declare unto you uh, under the unction of the Holy Ghost uh, is that yes, sin uh, does abound, uh, but where sin doth abound, uh, grace uh, does much more uh, abound. Uh, I've come to tell you uh, that there's a word uh, that can get us out of this. Uh, we can't be entertained out of it. Uh, we can't be programmed out of it. Uh, it's not going to come through IG uh, and tweetable moments. Uh, but there is a word uh, from God. Uh, there is a word uh, that can pick us up uh, and pull us out. Uh, turn us around uh, and set us free. Uh, and I believe that somebody tonight uh, you're gonna get your deliverance uh, and it's not gonna stop there uh, but you're gonna go back home uh, and just like you was restored at peak uh, you're gonna see your brother restored on Sunday uh, you're gonna see your backslid drug addict mama pray back through next week uh, you're gonna see your neighborhood kids uh, get deliverance uh, because greater uh, greater uh, greater uh, greater uh, Greater, greater, greater is he that's in me. You get out of here, doubt. You get out of here, fear. You get out of here, Satan. You may be welcome next door, but you're not welcome here. tell you that with God, the plan of God, the Word of God, the Spirit of God, 
that out of all of this chaos and out of all of this confusion and out of all of these circumstances that's brought brokenness seemingly beyond repair and without remedy, I've come to tell you that though with man there are some things that are impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Peek out of the ashes. God wants to give us beauty. And out of our very own valleys full of very dry bones, God wants to once again, like he did in Ezekiel 37, raise up out of that an exceeding uh, great uh, army. Uh, I've come to tell you I might be looking at some strugglers, uh, but I'm not looking at people that's defeated. Uh, you might be defeated uh, if you wasn't at peak 2022, uh, but you're in the right place uh, at the right time uh, for some things to start coming back together, uh, for the winds of the Spirit to blow fresh life uh, back. But every promise has a contingent. And every promise has a price. Knowing what God's going to do in this building. Knowing what God wants to do when you go back home. Every time I'd get down to pray, I'd hear the voice of God say, you better tell my people. You better tell my people, I can and I will, but they must go back to the original recipe uh, that I myself eternally set in order. And so for the next little while, I just want to simply preach to peak, uh, remember the recipe. Uh, we have something that's tried and true. Uh, we have something that's been proven over and over and over again. Uh, we have testimonies in this building uh, of God fixing things uh, in individuals uh, that's much worse uh, than anything somebody else is facing. Uh, and if we want to see somebody else get it, uh, we can't put it on a new cart. Uh, we can't devise a new way. Uh, we can't water it down. Uh, we can't make it more user friendly uh, but we've got to get back uh, to the Bible uh, and we've got to get back uh, to the recipe uh, for it does work I just want to talk to you for a minute because because unfortunately through the pandemic too many Pentecostals got way too political. Bad politics are not the root of our troubles and good politicians can't fix what we're dealing with. personal opinion and the politician's personal opinion and your personal opinion is just that and it really doesn't have much power to heal and help beyond that but the recipe of truth says and ye shall know the truth <laughs> Another civil rights leader is not the answer. Uh, another one that wants to share the wealth uh, is not the answer. Uh, I want to tell you what the answer is. Uh, it's getting back uh, to the Word of God. Uh, come, uh, let us reason together. Uh, 
Though your sins be like scarlet, I'll make you white as snow. And if you be willing, if you be willing, if you'll look at the recipe and obedient, you'll receive the recipe. If you be willing and obedient, I know there's some bad in our land, but there's still some good for the people of God. There's still some people that want to come back home. There's still some backsliders uh, that want to pray back through. Race is not the problem. Culture is not the problem. These things are simply symptoms of the problem. And I don't want to give you my opinion of what the problem is. And so I'll simply read to you what the problem is. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. John the Revelator would write. The Apostle Paul Bishop Wilson would write it on this wise. For we wrestle not uh, against flesh and blood, uh, but against principalities uh, and against powers uh, and against the rulers of darkness of this world, uh, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Uh, First John would say it like this, uh, and this is that spirit of the Antichrist, uh, wherefore you have heard uh, it should come, uh, and even now is already in the world. Uh, Pentecostals, uh, it's time for you to recognize uh, that this is a spiritual thing, uh, and you can't defeat spiritual things uh, with carnal methods uh, somewhere uh, somewhere uh, you gotta get back in a prayer room uh, you gotta get back down on your face uh, you've gotta cry out He only has a little bit of time to work. It's not flesh and blood, but principalities and rulers of darkness. It is the spirit of the Antichrist that's even now in the world. And that would be depressing if it stopped there. But Paul would write to the Thessalonians that I would uh, that you not soon be shaken uh, in mind uh, or troubled uh, neither uh, by uh, spirit nor uh, by uh, word. And I'm like, I'm like Brother Collins. He is so much smarter than me. And if he's not gonna get into eschatology, I'm sure not. But what I do know, without a doubt, is that he really wants to work even greater than what he's working, but there's a little problem. He's got somebody greater standing in the way. And the apostle Paul would talk about this Spirit and this man of perdition and he would talk about the mystery of iniquity but then he would get down and he would say but we uh, are bound uh, to give thanks always to God for you brethren beloved of the Lord uh, because God uh, because God uh, hath from the beginning uh, chosen you uh, through uh, salvation uh, 
and sanctification of the spirit uh, and the belief uh, of the truth. Uh, you know what I've come to say? Uh, as long as we're still here, uh, there's still hope. Uh, there's still help. Uh, there's still a chance. I've come to declare to you that I don't care how addicted they are or what they're addicted to or how long they've been addicted. As long as we're here, there's hope. I don't care what their grandparents did. I don't care what their mom and daddy did. I don't care what their auntie did. As long as I'm here, there's hope. As long as you're here, there's hope. These aren't my words. You have to take it up with Jesus Christ. For in the 20th chapter and the 21st verse of the book of John, he said, as the Father hath sent me. So we've been listening. We've been catching it. We've been letting it transfer, and tonight there's another generation preaching it. Uh, as the Father uh, hath sent me, uh, so now send I you, uh, and greater things, uh, and greater things, uh, and greater things uh, in my name. Uh, you're going to cast out devils. Uh, you're going to speak with new tongues. Uh, you're going to receive power uh, after the Holy Ghost. Uh, has come on. And there's still a recipe. Somebody shout a recipe. I know you're standing. Can I have just a few more minutes? Thank you for giving me something and not making me take it. There's still a recipe. There's still a recipe that can bring restoration and unprecedented revival. I'm not trying, Brother Young, to be sensational tonight. Do I believe I can save the whole world? No, because hell hath enlarged itself. I might not can save the whole world, but I can go back home and save my world. I can knock on every door and generate. Uh, I can. I got some faithful generate people here tonight. Uh, Saturday outreach still works. Uh, Monday prayer still prevails. Uh, I might not can save all of them, uh, but I'm going to do everything I can uh, to save all of them that I can. Uh, I'm going to go back home uh, and I'm going to say God can. Uh, God will. You think it's good now. The preacher might not get any better, but there's fixed to be miracles and signs and wonders. I'm gonna tell you, some of you's gonna get a phone call tomorrow, uh, and it's gonna be somebody that had cancer, uh, and they're not even at peak, they was too sick to come. Uh, but because somebody uh, responded to the word of God uh, and the word of faith, uh, I've come to tell some brother uh, that you're worried about your sibling. Uh, that spirit of suicide uh, is lifting right now. Uh, there's an unseen hand uh, reaching down to that dark place. We'll give you the recipe. It's simple. I'm embarrassed at how simple I'm being. Except for the fact that we've had enough pretty preaching and it ain't working too much in our movement. See, if you want the recipe, you got to understand that, that tonight is not the first time. 
Neither is it the worst time that Satan has done everything that he can to destroy what God has created. That's why he's good at it, because he's been at it a while. That's why some of you need to quit being so silly and so stupid and think you're going to outsmart him. You can't outsmart him. You got to outpray him. You got to outfast him. You got to outworship him. You got to outdeclare the name that's above every name. You'll never get educated enough. You'll never get programmed enough. You got to go to war in the spirit. I'm kind of starting to feel like preaching a little bit. Because I got it honest. In case nobody's told you tonight, uh, the devil uh, is still a liar. uh, And there is no truth uh, in uh, him. See, God knew this was going to be a continual problem. So he just went ahead and established an eternal recipe all the way back before time known to us ever ticked its first top. See, you might think that our world tonight is in chaos, and it is. You might think it's in trouble, and it is. You might think that it's broken beyond remedy, and it appears that way. But I want to take you back to the very book of beginnings. Uh, I don't care what Darwin said, uh, or your little pretty professor tries to teach you. uh, In the beginning, uh, God, uh, God, uh, God created the heavens. uh, and the earth. And I'm not going to mix eschatology and I'm not going to mess with creation theology. I'm just with my friends on that. But what I do know is that God has never created something chaotic. Because God is not the author of confusion. So for God to create the world in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2 means God's a liar uh, and God can be an author of confusion. But between verse 1 and verse 2, something happens. I said I wasn't going to get into it, but I, I kind of feel like it was Satan uh, had been thrown down. But regardless of what I think or you think, what is a fact is that by verse 2, uh, the world uh, was without form uh, and it was void uh, and only darkness. And then all of a sudden, are you ready? Because it's so simple. You'll miss it, or you'll laugh at me, or you'll respond to it. What made the difference was the Spirit of God. For all you that don't like long altar services and you don't like Sunday night parties uh, and you don't like people shaking loose in the Holy Ghost uh, and you don't like preachers that press people to talk in tongues, uh, you just got to stay living in chaos. uh, But the Spirit of God uh, began to move. uh, And in the midst uh, of a Spirit-filled atmosphere, uh, The Word of God, the Word of God, not the Word of man, but the Word. 
church. Are you hearing me back in the cheap seats? Uh, is the word of God working back there? The word of God uh, lives with the spirit of God. Uh, something begin to happen. Uh, something begin to shake. Uh, something begin to take place. The Word of God simply just started saying that there. Come here, Brother Collins. There might be people here that don't like telling people you need to let the word of prophecy come in your mouth. But when you get in a spirit-filled environment uh, and you get this many Holy Ghost-filled believers uh, and they're talking in tongues uh, and they're praying in the Holy Ghost, uh, we absolutely believe uh, that the power of life and death uh, is in your tongue uh, because it's not what you say, uh, but it's declaring uh, what thus uh, sayeth uh, the word of the Lord. If I had cute suspenders, I'd take my coat off right now. All of a sudden, light doesn't just come to the world, but darkness is eradicated. The word which with the spirit was so powerful that there was some, that there was greater light. Huh? But there still was no darkness. Huh? Some of them were just dealing with a lesser light. Huh? But all of them huh, were coming out of the confusion huh, and the chaos. Huh? You might be standing somebody that's not as spiritual as you. Huh? They may not have as much victory as you. Huh? But in this kind of environment, huh, with the spirit moving huh, and the word going forth, huh, Darkness, huh? it has to go. It's got to go. Because of spirit and word, darkness disappears. Order begins to reign instead of chaos. For all you that don't like separation, you need to go back to the book of Genesis and see that there can be no decoration until there's first separation. Before he started clothing the earth and painting the skies, uh, he drew some lines uh, and he said, this can't come over here uh, and this can't come over there. Uh, Order takes place. And we go from confusion and chaos to being able to step back and say, it's good. Ooh. It's good. It's good. And he said, if you think the word and the spirit can do something for the world, let me show you what it can do for man. Huh? It's very good. Huh? Let me tell you, preaching can change our world uh, and make it better. Uh, but preaching uh, is for the perfecting uh, of the saint. Uh, I've come to tell you uh, that through the Word of God, uh, you can overcome that addiction. Uh, you can overcome that pornography. Uh, you can overcome that depression. Uh, you can overcome that fear. It didn't 
didn't stop in Genesis, Brother Booker. We see it again in Ezra. The world wasn't in captivity. But the people of God had been led into captivity. You know what they do? The Bible says they started praying. Isn't that a novel idea? Some of you can't get off Facebook long enough to have a Holy Ghost prayer meeting. You're more interested in getting a selfie at the altar and posting so the preacher might glance at it and like it and know you was there than praying your way into the Spirit so that you can get deliverance. And because they start praying, God starts dealing with the world and puts it on the king's heart. <laughs> Let them people go. Let they, they've got an act of restoration and revival to take care of. Uh, give them whatever they need. Uh, do for them whatever they want. Uh, hey, sweetheart, don't think you holding back your tithe uh, and not giving your offering uh, is going to stop the work of God from going forth. Uh, if somebody prays, uh, God will always pay. And a remnant I don't know how many it was but I think about 6,000 in Houston would be good they got revival and restoration on their mind and they go into Jerusalem where walls has been torn down and houses representing families have been destroyed uh, and burnt Nehemiah gets him some people with some hammers and he gets ready to grab a brick and go fix a wall. And Ezra stops him. And he says, before we build this wall, I need somebody to build me a platform. And then I need them to put on it a pulpit made out of wood. And then I need to get some men from Israel, come on men, uh, to stand on my right uh, and stand on my left. Uh, and Ezra said, uh, before we can keep somebody on a wall, uh, we gotta have somebody in a pulpit. Uh, and he opened up the book uh, and he began to read uh, and he began to expand. When he got through preaching, uh, you couldn't get him off that wall. Uh, you could send Tabalith. You could send Zambias. Uh, you could send some reprobate uh, that's got an anointing uh, to keyboard. Uh, but they couldn't get him to come down. Because uh, there's something about preaching. Uh, there's something about the Word of God. Uh, there's something about an anointed man of God. Uh, It wasn't just Ezra preaching, Brother Urshan. I like again, Brother Collins, what you had to say today about preaching. It's not something only done and reserved by a select few in a pulpit. See, preaching is not a monologue by a man. It's a dialogue between an anointed man of God with a spirit and a people of God with a spirit. Huh? You know what those of you are responding are doing right now? Uh, you're preaching. Uh, when you walk out of your church on Sunday uh, and you live what your preacher preached, uh, you're an epistle uh, being read. I'm glad you're shouting so I can say this and it might not hurt your feelings too much. Let me tell you, there's only one response to preaching that's acceptable when it's an anointed man of God and he's preaching the word of God. You don't get to put your opinion on it. You don't get to take 30 seconds out of context what he said 
and try to destroy his reputation. You don't get to say, well, that ain't apostolic. Huh? And that's not what, let me tell you what the response, if you want to be the preacher, uh, the Bible said as Ezra preached, uh, they stood to their feet. Uh, they lifted their hands. Uh, they bowed their head. Uh, and they said, uh, amen. Uh, if you won't preach up the work in your world, uh, you can't be opinionated. Uh, you can't be a criticizer. Uh, you gotta be an amen. Uh, Before I really preach, I'm just showing you that preach is the answer. You see it again in Ezekiel 37. He calls out a very anointed prophet of God. And he takes him to a valley that's filled. There's not just a few situations, but it's filled with dismembered, broken, sun-bleached, dry bones. And he asks the preacher, he said, I want you to look around at this world and I want you to tell me, can anything live? Huh? And the prophet answered, the only way uh, I've been able to answer some things in 2022, uh, God, uh, only you know. Uh, and he said, Zeke, uh, that's right. Uh, this is what I need you to do. Uh, I need you to step out in that chaos. Uh, I need you to get right down in that brokenness. Uh, I need you to step right down in that neighborhood. Uh, I need you to get a Bible study uh, and go sit right on that part, bitch. Uh, and I just want you to preach uh, what thus saith uh, the word of the Lord. Uh, and Ezekiel said, as I preached, uh, not as I played, uh, not as I performed, uh, not as I studied, uh, but as I preached, uh, as I preached, uh, bones started connecting uh, and joints started being repaired. Uh, and sin, uh, and he said, by the time it was over, uh, it looked like they could live. Uh, it looked like something could, uh, you know what I'm looking at after the last three days? I'm looking at some people that's getting reconnected. But even at the end of that good preaching, he said, they look like they can live, but there still ain't no breath in them, Lord. And he said, that's all right. I settled this in Genesis. It's going to be real bad by Acts chapter 2. But let me just foreshadow it for you, Ezekiel. Start talking to the wind. Because I'm fixing to do something right now that they're going to see happen in Acts 2. Uh, and then they're going to see happen on the last night of Peak Conference 22. Uh, all of a sudden, uh, there's going to be a sound uh, of a rushing mighty wind. Uh, and it's going to feel uh, in tongues uh, like fire uh, it's gonna set on us and when you get to Acts 2 it's gonna start in the upper room the church but it's going to anoint them to leave the church and go facilitate restoration uh, and revival uh, in the world. And they're going to stagger out a peak. Uh, hey, I don't know when we got to turn the lights off, but it wouldn't be surprising to me if some of you men, young men, didn't get to have pillow fights tonight or fill up desk drawers with shaving cream because your youth leader staggered you out because you was drunk on the Holy Ghost and you was getting just the power that you need to step back into your world and say, I'm not drunk like you think I'm drunk. Let me preach to you for just a minute. That same Jesus, you crucified him. But it's prophecy, uh, 
that I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And somebody's going to get enough Holy Ghost. Thank you, singers, but I ain't even close to being through, but I like y'all worshiping up here too. Somebody's going to get enough on them that they're not going to stand in a pulpit and patty cake around. They're not going to start self-help classes. They're not going to the, bind the hands of a man in the pulpit. Uh, but as he stands up with the rest of the brethren, uh, he's going to feel liberty to say, uh, repent uh, and be baptized. Uh, every one of you, uh, in the name. The original recipe, Brother Godair, requires preaching. Line upon line preaching. Precept upon precept preaching. Hear a little there preaching. Don't think your pastor don't have a license to meddle because he's got an anointing from God to do just that with sin that tries to creep into your life. I want to propose to you that feel good, prosperity, Everybody get blessed. Copy and printed the notes from the latest charismatic to bring to the pulpit on Sunday. I want to propose to you that those are broken cisterns uh, that hold uh, no uh, water. Uh, our world needs help. Therefore, they need a preacher. Uh, a preacher, not that'll pat him on the back, but I'll say you gotta repent or you're gonna perish. They come to me in prayer. We've got Pastor Young, a crop of some of the best young preachers that Pentecost has ever had. And you can sermonize like nobody's business. Matter of fact, some of you sermonize so good we know it wasn't original with you. Just, just word of the wise. But hey, that's okay. I stole a lot of stuff in my life. I'm going to steal some more. I'm going to preach John 20, 21 everywhere I go and act like it's my idea. I can't believe Brother Wilson's copying me. How dare you at your age plagiarize a young man? Goodness, get your own thoughts. Actually, he's way too smart for me to plagiarize just like we know when you're doing it and they'd know if I did that. I can't even speak English, much less Wilson. <laughs> but I thought, we've got some of the best young preachers in our movement, yet they're not seeing the results they want. And it come to me, I felt in prayer that they're so worried about getting blood on their hands that they don't have any blood on their swords. I don't want you to come to generate and kill people, but I want you to know you've got liberty to come to generate and strike out at the adversary. Uh, and I don't mind blood flowing to the horse's bridle uh, as long as they're getting delivered. Uh, and uh, you need to quit patty caking around. Uh, and you need to get back to the word. Uh, and you need to quit preaching and generalities. Uh, and you need to get back to declaring uh, this.
this is what God said. Uh, a woman can't wear that which pertaineth to a man. Uh, and a man can't wear that which pertaineth to a woman. Uh, and a woman can't cut her hair. Uh, and she's got to dress modestly. Uh, and a man needs to cut his hair. Uh, and he's got to dress modestly. Uh, because there's something about that kind of preaching. Uh, you want to know how to see the transgender delivered? Uh, teach them about the confusion uh, that comes uh, with dress. I believe in being blessed coming in. I'm just about through. I believe in being blessed going out. But that's a covenant that a lot of people preaching it don't back up and read the verse preceding it. It said, if you obey these words, then peak, we need to quit skipping these words and getting to the blessing and providing false hope. We need to quit preaching about the blessing uh, and we need to just preach the word uh, and all these blessings uh, will overtake us uh, because if you seek ye first uh, the kingdom of God Hey, I like to shout, but we need some conviction preachers. Everybody wants to give verbal being godlike status, and they all want his gift, but nobody wants his message. Because his message was, this is a scummy pot. Oh, Brother Kurt, are you ready to help bail me out? I mean, I don't really need it, but I want us to be in this together. I've just come on the last night of peak to remind you, preaching, it works. And you know what I'm learning about preaching, Brother Barrier? It don't upset sinners that their grandparents was alcoholics and their parents are alcoholics and they've got rings and cuttings and markings everywhere you can put them and they've tried everything they can try and yet they staggered in saying if this church don't help me I'm going to go home and lock myself in the closet and take the rest of what I have left and end it all. They don't get upset at this kind of preaching. It's carnal second and third and fourth generation saints that doesn't want somebody telling them you can't go to the ball game and worship idols and then live in freedom. We need some young preachers to pick up the mantle and start preaching against idolatry. Of course, before you start preaching against it, you got to start living it so you can be living what you're preaching. It's a shame that we got young preachers in our movement that they know more about what's going on in Major League. some of you are thinking. Paul had to deal with it. He said, for the preaching of the cross is to them that are going to perish. It's just foolishness. But to us that are wanting order in our chaos, I'm going to tell you there's miracles in this room right now.
Timothy. Preach the word. Don't worry that there might be some that won't endure sound doctrine. Because for every one of those backslidden reprobates that walked away, there's somebody crying out helplessly in the dark. Saying, if there's a God, can somebody tell me about Him? You're going to be afflicted for it, Timothy. But endure the affliction. Just don't stop doing the work. Hey. I know that there's people right in here tonight because of some of the things you've seen and heard and unfortunately lent your ear to. You've, you've bought into a lie that I want to help clarify tonight and that is that scriptural preaching is ugly and divisive and hurts people and that if a preacher dare take a text that names something that makes us uncomfortable he's got a bad attitude and has no right now, now I'm not placating for, permissing, justifying, or encouraging any preacher to have a bad attitude. But I do have to tell you that one of the greatest revivals that ever took place in the Bible was the result of a man that yes he had a bad attitude but he was still declaring the word of the Lord because Jonah walked through Nineveh kicking rocks and giving people an evil look but even his attitude wasn't powerful enough to stop the working of God's word and with a bad attitude as he said, repent or you're going to perish hoping that they would all perish and not repent. The word was so powerful that none of a robe themselves in sackcloth because they were so hungry for an answer. And this is what I want to say if ever preacher you've ever heard that preaches against something with a bad attitude. Why don't some of you with a good attitude start preaching it? Want to just peek? I know there's some backslidden reprobates that too many of you have lent your ear to and you get caught up and you comment and it's you don't even realizing it but it's endearing you to your curse but your pastor has every right to preach traditions Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions. Which you have been taught, whether by word or our own epistles. 
so see there's traditions that people are trying with reckless abandonment to tear down and you young people don't realize that those traditions were birthed with a man of God so hungry to see revival that he crawled up under a pew and he said, okay, God, give me some convictions that'll help set this church apart and make these people a peculiar people in a royal priesthood. They'd really be able to show forth the light of you that's called them out of darkness. And as they was praying, they would hear scriptures ring out in their ear like, well, you got to tell them they can't love the world. Neither the things that are in the world. Because if any man love the world, then the love of the Father is not in him. And so they would, they would look into the world in a movement of hippies. And they would see signs of the rebellion. They weren't trying to be lords over God's heritage. But they would step to the pulpit. And they would say, you know what? We're not trying to win the world by looking like the world. Wait, 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 wait don't clap because you might not want to clap when I get through. So we got to be distinct from the world. And so men... Not, not because I have scripture and verse, but I got a mandate to preach against such like things. And, and so because we're a distinct people, go get you some razors, and some shaving cream. Do I think everybody that has a beard is going to hell? No. But I think if your pastor teaches against it and you grow one, you sure will. Because the issue is not the hair that you grow on your face. It's the rebellion that's in your heart. And some of these backslidden Pentecostals that's wanting to make fun of any preacher and talk about it not being apostolic. It's not because they're trying to be apostolic or they quit letting their daughters wear pants and cut their hair. Because that is Bible. And they wouldn't have girlfriends in each of the cities they go to to hold rallies and I'm not talking about leaders in Pentecostal movements. I'm talking about reprobates in the world uh, that you are to not even be connected to. Uh, but when an anointed man of God says something in a pulpit, you automatically buy into the pushback. You better recognize uh, that preaching is the only hope of our world. When did we start tearing people down that challenged us to be more consecrated? You know what? Through prayer, I've got a lot of convictions that I don't find in that Bible. I don't do them because it's wrong if I do. I don't do them because I like to stand and peek on a Friday night. 
and there be an undeniable and questionable anointing flow through me. And I can be used of God to help you. I wonder what happened if you quit needing chapter and verse and you just went home and started praying things like, make me in your image. Make me more like you. Oh, oh, what? You want me to lengthen my sleeves a little bit? Well, I don't believe I'll be lost if I don't. But if it'll bring some added consecration and therefore a little bit more anointing, I just want to see revival in my world. tired of burying family members at overdose. I'm tired of praying for people that had to preach funerals of suicides. Not in the world. I'm talking about go home on Sunday night after church and find him there on his knees with his Bible because he realized what he had done was too much and he didn't have a phone to call anybody for help. And so the last act he would do, if you don't think the world wants it, the last thing he would do is he would hope against hope that he might find forgiveness. That's how they found my brother. He was on his hands and his knees propped up against the washing machine with his head on his body. And you think because you try to cancel me or take me out of context and tweet me, you're going to stop me? I wasn't able to reach him, Brother Elder, but I might can reach somebody at peak 2022. Put your hands and let the Holy Ghost flow. There's an anointing here right now. There's a high and holy calling being given right now. You need to pray until that word encounters that spirit-filled vessel. Come on, I need some prayer warriors in the back. I need some prayer warriors right here in the middle. I need some travailers right here up front. We need restoration. And this is what the word declares. He sent his word. He sent his word. He sent his word and heal them and deliver them for their destructions. Psalms 107, Matthew 8, when the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed and he cast out the spirit with his word. Come on, the ingredients are here tonight for you to Follow the recipe. Do it. Men of God, will you please find somebody and lay hands on them? There's spirits of fear that the Word's casting out right now. There's spirits of suicide that the Word's casting out right now. There's spirits of death and destruction that the Word's casting out right now. Help me, men of God. Help me, women of God. Help me, saints of God.
Come on, I like the roar you made when they ask you to shout with a voice of triumph. I wonder if we could create a louder roar with you travailing and praying in the spirit and see what God would do. Come on, there's some of you great men of God, you've been spectators all week. I need you to help us right now. Come on, this is a pivotal moment for individuals and our movement. We need your help. We need you to lend your hands and put them on somebody's head. We need you to lend your voice and speak a word of faith in somebody's ear. Young preacher, son, let God call and anoint you and empower you and give you a determination right now. I'll stand for truth. I'll declare truth. I'll live truth. Come on, help me peek. Help me peek, help me peek, help me peek. You got somebody beside you. You don't even know they got prescriptions in their purses or in their backpacks back in the room. Uh, and the words healing them right now. The words delivering them right now. Uh, they just need somebody to help them get in the Holy Ghost. Zion come on I want you to close your eyes and lift your voice as loud as you can all over this auditorium right now there's deliverance come on praise team you're up here more than just seeing I see several of you praying in the Holy Ghost Lift your voice as loud as you can and help me war against... Go ahead, Sister Haley Young. Go ahead. Pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Right now. Right now. Speak it out with authority. Uh, with authority. Uh. Come on. I want, I want you praise singers that are talking in tongues. Uh, I want you to declare freedom and liberty uh, and power in the Holy Ghost in this house right now. Ah! That's it, let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. Men of God, women of God, pray for somebody right now. Their pastor may not can get to them. Their youth pastor may not can find them. But they're crying out. They're crying out. It's bigger than tonight. You're going to go home and see restoration in your family. You're going to see revival in your church. You're going to see increase in your community.
praying in the Holy Ghost right now. Come on, take somebody by the hand and let the wind of the Spirit flow. You don't know how desperate that young man, young lady you just joined with needs you to talk in tongues and how desperately they need to talk in tongues. Get out of here, death. Get out of here, death. Get out of here, death, in the name of Jesus Christ. Get out of here, darkness. I take authority over the rulers of darkness in Jesus' name right now. I take authority over depression in the name of Jesus. Be cast out. Spirit of fear through the power of the Holy Ghost right now. Receive a sound mind and peace that passes understanding.
Come on, help me, prayer warriors. Come on, take somebody by the hand and help them get loose in the Holy Ghost right now. Come on, just help them get loose in the Holy Ghost right now. <laughs> Come on, I want some young men and young women that you're feeling victory. I want you to lift your voice and shout with it right now. Come on, I want you to lift your voice and shout with a voice of triumph right now. You're not walking out of here defeated. You're not walking out of here the victim. You're not walking out of here to face death. But you're walking out of here to see revival. To be a part of restoration. You're walking out of here to have a life. And not death. Come on, take somebody by the hand. And I want you to just begin to dance right now. Come on, come on. That dance is putting Satan under your feet. That dance is putting Satan under your feet. Come on. That dance is putting Satan under your feet right now. Come on, come on. You ain't danced all week. You need to take somebody and dance right now. Your dancing and deliverance. Lift your voice. 